Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. So awesome to have you here. If you don't know me, my name is Craig and I host this show, Sports Talk Detroit with my buddy Chris. We love talking Lions, we love talking Pistons and Detroit sports. You know it, we love it. We are fans that are definitely homers, but we love to keep it real. So without further ado, let's talk about today's topic. I'm scrolling through Twitter today and I see a reputable, somewhat reputable source that says the Detroit Pistons are interested in trading for John Wall. Yeah, you heard me right. John Wall. Yes, John Wall, the one who makes $44 million, that John Wall. That's correct. And the one who makes $47 million next year. Yes, the one who missed it last year and a half. Well, he played 40 games last year. In the last three seasons, he's played a combined 72 games, I believe. Yes, that John Wall. Sound familiar? Pistons have traded for an aging superstar before. His name was Blake Griffin on the tail end of his career. In fact, we still have $29 million, if I'm not mistaken, on the books this year paying Blake Griffin to play for the New Jersey Nets. We still owe him $29 million this year. So I would love to say that I could just debunk this, but it was written. And I know that this is the time of the year. It's been a few weeks since we've had NBA Summer League. We have a few weeks before NBA training camps start to open up and over a month before the season. So this is kind of the dead season in in NBA time. So I think what happens here is people get a little anxious with their pens and they wanna write about something that might not necessarily be true, but we're gonna give it credence because they do know what they're doing. If you don't know what happened, uh, John Wall and the Houston Rockets have agreed uh, that they are going to part ways this year. And they said that he is going to participate in training camp, but he is not going to play in regular season games while the team tries to shop him for the best deal possible. And the Pistons are of course linked to this. So does it fit? Does John Wall fit in Detroit? I kind of give you a hint on that when I was comparing him to Blake Griffin and kind of what that looked like. Now, Blake Griffin was great for one year. He willed us all the way to the playoffs and then on one and a quarter knees, not even one and a half knees, came, played two games against the Bucks, where he absolutely held his own against Giannis. He did great against the Greek Freak, but that was it. He honestly probably really messed up his knee in that series. So what about John Wall? We know he's gonna make almost 45 million next year. What about the stats? He played 40 games for Houston last year. He averaged uh, 20.6 points, 6.9 assists, and he shot a little over 40% from the field. Not great shooting numbers. But what's one thing that the Pistons brass has said all off season that we need to improve? Outside shooting. So how well does he shoot the three? If he shot that at 40%, I'm all for it. Unfortunately, he's a 31.7% field goal shooter from three this last year, and he's just over 32% for his career at 32.3%. John Wall is not a floor spacer. He's a slasher. He's a driver that relies on his athleticism, his quickness, and creativity to get to the hole, not only to create shots for himself, but to create shots for others. And in his prime, he was very, very good at it. Defense was never necessarily a specialty, but he was good at it. He's a good player and I still think he has something left in the tank. I just don't think it's for a team that's in the middle of a retool, rebuild, restore, as Troy Weaver likes to call it. But then if you just talk, I don't want to just talk about the fit on the floor. I don't think it works. You're taking touches away from Cade Cunningham. If you invest in John Wall, you're basically saying Killian Hayes, it's not going to work. We don't believe in you. You are not the future. And we're handing the keys to John Wall. I think you need to see what Killian Hayes and Cade Cunningham can do with each other. The fit on the floor doesn't make sense to take the ball out of Cade's hands. Put it in his hands. Let him be a playmaker. Let him learn with this young team as we take some losses this season. That's okay. They can learn. But what about financially? Does it work financially? $45 million. You have to add up the first two, three, four, five highest paid players on our team in order to get to John Wall's contract. We got $29 million on Blake Griffin. He's gone. Obviously, we can't trade that money away. Then you have Jeremy Grant at $20 million. We are not trading Jeremy Grant. Troy Weaver turned down offers reportedly for multiple first round picks for Jeremy Grant last year. He's not going anywhere, especially for John Wall. Kelly Olenek at 12 million, then you have Cade at 10, 
You're not trading Cade. DeAndre Jordan, we already said goodbye to him. His money doesn't count. Corey Joseph makes a little over $7 million. And then you have Killian Hayes at 5.5. Hamadou Diallo at 5.2. But he has a no trade clause until January of next year. So we can't do that with him. The money doesn't work, people. Don't believe these things every time you hear them. The Detroit Pistons, mark my words, are not trading for John Wall. If they do, everything I thought I knew about Troy Weaver is now in question. We're not doing it. And financially, the only way to do it is to get a third, maybe even a fourth team involved and giving away a lot of picks because the assets aren't there or we have to get rid of our young assets. Um, and that's just not something I'm really willing to do right now. And I don't think the uh, management team for the Pistons is either. So that's my take. The Pistons are not going to trade for John Wall. When you see stuff like this in the middle of summer, don't worry about it. Take a deep breath, calm down. The young players are gonna play this year. We're gonna have fun watching them. There's gonna be a lot of losses, but we're gonna have fun. Thanks for watching everybody. Go Pistons.